welcome to my YouTube channel, Little Ways, Little Things. I'm so excited because it's time to start decorating for Halloween. So I have a very fun video for you today. It's gonna be a little bit of Halloween decorating inspiration. I'm gonna be showing you two different ways that you can decorate a Halloween mantle. And also the second thing is I'm gonna be having a $25 gift certificate giveaway to Bath and Body Works because this channel has gotten more than 2,000 subscribers, so I really wanted to thank you and share this really fun giveaway with you in honor of that. So just listen to how you can enter. The first thing I wanna say is that I'm gonna be styling this mantle back here two different ways for Halloween, two different styles. The first style is going to be a vintage type style using some of these kind of vintage paper mache looking things. And the second way is going to be an Edgar Allan Poe theme. And it's going to be using some ravens and some really cool stuff like that. The thing that both mantles have in common is this large picture that's got the 31 on it. So you know that I like to use the dictionary pages. I think I showed you in my last video, which I will link um, after this one, but I showed you how I made some leaves for a pumpkin out of these dictionary leaves and I out of this dictionary pages. But I pretty much just keep this little dictionary around and I use pages here and there for things like decorations and junk journals and in my planner. So I do all kinds of things with it. And I was really inspired by the leaves on the pumpkin in the last video to do another Halloween type, fall type of um, project with those dictionary pages. So I decided to make this large picture back here and it is size 22 by 28. And I it, right now it has a 31 on it, but I put the 31 on the top of it with repositionable adhesive. So that can actually be moved, removed, and something else put on it So in its place. So that's what I'm gonna show you. That's what I'm gonna do. That's how I'm gonna kind of use this one big statement piece into two different mantles. And just to give you some inspiration to show you that you don't have to buy new things every year, you can make little adjustments. And anyway, to get to the giveaway part, in order to enter the giveaway, what you have to do is first of all, be subscribed to the channel. And second of all, at the end of the video, I want you to comment down below whether you liked the vintage style or the Poe style better. So we have two styles, vintage and Poe, like Edgar Allan Poe. And all you have to do to enter the giveaway is be subscribed and comment down below whether you liked the vintage or the Poe style better. And I will choose a name at totally at random and we'll get in touch with you for winning your gift certificate. So with all that being said, let's get started on how to make this big 31 picture. I have an old dictionary from the 60s and the pages are kind of yellow. So I'm gonna take out 15 to 18 pages around and start cutting them into smaller sections. Some I'm gonna actually leave whole, some of them I'll cut in half, some into fourths. Then I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and put it into a paper plate and start to Mod Podge or decoupage those dictionary pages onto a plain poster board. This poster board came from Hobby Lobby because I got it in a pack of, I think it was for 10 of them for $2.99. So that's a little bit cheaper than Dollar Tree. Anyway, I'm just going to take the pages from the dictionary, all the different pieces and start um, putting some of the Mod Podge on the back and some onto the poster board. And then after I place the dictionary page down. I'll also put a little bit of Mod Podge over the top, just a thin layer to make sure there's no pieces that are sticking up. Now I found this dictionary at Half Price Books, but I also have another one that I found at a garage sale. So there's just all kinds of places that you can pick one up. If you find one, make sure you grab it. Be, just keep it in your bookshelf because you never know when you might, might wanna use a page or two from it. So I'm just gonna keep Mod Podging these dictionary pages onto the poster board. I'm gonna do them kind of in a random order, but I am doing them with the words all um, kind of facing straight up. 
Uh, I don't have anything backwards or any of the pages backwards, but you can do it however you like. If you want to do one of these projects, you can do them different sizes. You don't have to cut the pages up at all. I think it would be awesome if you just did the whole pages. Um, anyway, you just do it however you want to. But this particular poster board is 22 by 28 and it is going to fit into a black frame that I had one of my daughter's pictures in. Now, unfortunately, the glass to that frame broke and I didn't just want to throw it away or even go buy a new glass. And so this poster board is going to set right into the frame just perfectly and it's just a good way to reuse something instead of just throwing it away if it gets broken. So there's nothing really wrong with the black frame, it's just the glass that was broken. I'm just going to continue to decoupage these dictionary pages onto this poster board until it's all finished and then I'll finish it with a thin layer, like I said, just to keep the pages from lifting up in different spots. You can use the matte finish of the Mod Podge or the shiny finish. It's just whatever you want and you can even keep the glass part of the picture frame on it at the end. It's basically just whatever you want to do to make it get the look that you're trying to achieve. I'm letting my poster board dry overnight and after it gets pretty dry I'm also going to set some books on top to keep it from getting any warps in it and just to keep it nice and flat. And then I'm going to use my Cricut to cut out some words and some numbers. If you don't have a die cut machine such as a Cricut or a Silhouette machine you can always just use your printer to print out whatever you want your picture to say in whatever font and whatever color and whatever size that you want it and then just cut it out and paste it on the same way that I'm going to adhere my letters down. Now you can see that I've cut out the word nevermore which is a nod to Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven which is one of my favorite things to read at Halloween every year and I've also cut out a big 31 like the 31st of October. The 31 I'm going to use in the vintage style mantle and obviously I'll use the nevermore in the Poe style mantle. I'm using some scrapbooking repositionable adhesive because I want to be able to take the 31 back off of the decoupage dictionary pages. You don't have to do that if you want to keep yours more permanent. You can use Elmer's glue or any kind of adhesive that you want. It's as simple as that. Here is the vintage style mantle and I really like the way it came out. So other than the 31 picture that I made from the poster board and the dictionary and the broken picture frame, I didn't really buy anything new for either one of these mantles. If you go back and look at my Halloween home tour from last year, you will recognize most of these pieces, I'm sure. Um, on this side, I have this cute little cat that I found at a garage sale or a thrift store and I framed it because it reminded me of a cat that hung in my elementary school during Halloween time when I was a kid. These vintage style paper mache looking pumpkins are from a, a Hobby Lobby collection and I've just been collecting them every year. They put like a new one or two of them out every year. The little jack-o-lantern that sits on his side and lights up is just an old one that a friend gave me. I put a banner on that dictionary page picture frame. I love the way it came out. I'm kind of giving you a close-up so you can see how much texture it has in it. 
I put the 31 on that one. It has that cute little burlap banner that I just kind of draped over it. That velvet orange pumpkin, I believe that came from Target last year. And then there is some more of those vintage Hobby Lobby pumpkins. And there's even a little cat there. I also put some Dollar Tree fairy lights kind of wrapped around the pumpkin and all of that creepy cloth is just that's what it's called creepy cloth and it came from Dollar Tree and I think there's three of the little packages there so that's it for the vintage one now let's take a look at how the Edgar Allan Poe turned out well there it is it's really creepy and spooky I love the way this one came out also partly because I do like to read Edgar Allan Poe and I think it's just perfect for Halloween, but it's a little bit more kind of sophisticated than the other one. And as you can see, I have a big pumpkin with a P. That's just a coincidence. It's supposed to stand for Poe, but it's really our last name. And our last name begins with a P, so that's where I had that pumpkin from. I just had a bunch of these other things. You even see the sweater pumpkin from my last uh, DIY video there. Um, I've had the ravens came from Hobby Lobby a long, long time ago. The birdcage came from a garage sale. And there's like a couple of those fake books. And even a sugar birch candle from the Magnolia Market um, Christmas collection. But I just thought with the green and the label, it just fit up there really well. So that's basically all the pieces. Oh, I do want to talk about that tree on the corner. That is basically just branches that I got out of my backyard years ago, spray painted and stuck in there with some lighted branches as well into some styrofoam in an urn. Well, there you go. There's two Halloween mantles to give you some inspiration to get your mantle decorated for Halloween. I hope you will enter the giveaway for the Bath and Body Works gift certificate. We'll be doing the drawing on October the 10th. Make sure if you're not subscribed to my channel, you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you're notified the next time I upload a video. And also comment down below which one of the two styles that you like the best. And coming up next week will be my Halloween home tour.